Back in December, I did a video on something I called Octobeni, which is basically where I drew Kobeni every day for the month of October. I've been doing this since 2021, and I decided, hey, let me make a video about it, and uh, <laughs> you guys seem to really like that, and it makes me happy. So, it got me thinking, I do those Kobeni challenges every year, but there was one year, 2022, where I did two other challenges as well. I did Yamato, where I drew Yamato from One Piece every day for the month of May, and as you can tell from the title of this video, I also did Maki March, where I drew Makima from Chainsaw Man every day for the month of March. So I figured while I'm recording and editing my other video regarding Shonen Jump, I figured, hey, let me just drop this in the middle of it, why not? These videos don't take too long to make, so I figured it'll be nice for you guys to hold you over while I work on the next video. My name is Santanael, though my friends call me Ash, and I want to put a disclaimer right here, this art is old. Like, two years old, it's 2022. So, uh, I used to draw Makima kind of... <laughs> With, like, recent Makima drawings, I tried to invoke the spirit of Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks, or, like, Columbo from Columbo, but back then I used to draw her mad curvy, so you just gotta get used to that. So, with that out of the way, we had day one, which was a very simple Makima for me to just get a feel of how to draw her, how to draw her hair, her face, etc. I know Makima is rather contentious among Chainsaw Man fans, but she's one of my favorite characters in the series. She's a very well-written character, and I really like her simple design. I do wish I cropped this image better. I don't like how her thighs just kind of end. I wish I would have cropped it so maybe it's a little above her thighs so it doesn't look as jarring. Either way, it's a good mock to start out the month. For day two, alright, this was the big one. This was the one that I saw constantly get reposted and stolen and edited. This was Makima at McDonald's. So, my driving mantra for a lot of these challenges that I do is just puns, you know, like funny little jokes, what have you, involving the character's name. So, with Makima at McDonald's, is literally just Maki McDonald's. I thought that was fun. I did not expect this image to blow up. I didn't expect to see a Venom variant. I didn't expect this to get reposted and stolen and voiced over. It's kind of insane looking back on it. Legitimately, I feel like Oppenheimer at the end of the hit movie Oppenheimer, he's thinking about all the Oppens he heimered. It sucks too, looking back on it, because this was like the one piece I didn't put my signature on. I put it on the one before and everything after, but not this one for some reason. And of course, this is the one that blows up. But this ended up being like a cautionary tale for me, because it made me realize, hey, I need to sign everything I draw, regardless of how I feel about the quality, because you never know what's going to be reposted, what's going to be stolen, etc. Well, on a more positive note, continuing on the spirit of puns, Day 3 had me drawing Makima dressed as Majima from the Yakuza franchise. I distinctly remember when I drew this one, I was helping out at my family's restaurant and there wasn't any customers, so I just sat down and kind of doodled this in the corner of the restaurant until I had to go home. I'm a big fan of how I rendered the jeans here, and also I like how I drew the little smoky pochita, I thought that was cute. With day 4, there was this popular like swimsuit going around made by Verdi Grease, where it's kind of translucent in the middle and has like a little black line, kind of like the Adidas design, I guess. With like Octobeni and Maki March, it gives me a good opportunity to catch up on trends that I missed out on, like art trends specifically. I remember with the first Octobeni, I drew Kobeni at Starbucks because that was a popular trend going around at the time that I had no time for. So, with this Makima, I was able to pretty much cash in, like, hey, this is my contribution. I'm not a fan of how I drew Pochita here, though. He looks too wide. He should be more squished. I do like how I did the water, though, and I like the gradient background, too. I think I did a good job on that one. So, day five is big. <laughs> Day 5 is based on that one image of The Rock with a stack of pancakes, and it's also based on the finale of part 1 of Chainsaw Man. The top she's wearing is also referencing the name of the final chapter of Chainsaw Man, I Love Chainsaw. I would end up referencing the same scene during Octobeni 3, where I had Kobeni dressed as Marcel from Dungeon Meshi eating the same exact food, because I really liked the idea, I thought it was funny. With day 6, this one is more specific because on Tumblr I saw like this image of a fat Shiba Inu being taken on a walk 
And I thought it was really funny because I thought like, hey, what if Makima's walking Pochita? This is the first appearance of Makima in her dress that she wore during that one portion of Chainsaw Man. And I think Pochita looks a little better here. I, I got better at drawing Pochita over time, but I was still like kind of ironing out the kinks back then. It's kind of weird though, looking back on it, how I made Makima's hair a darker red here compared to the other days. I don't know why, but whatever, it's fine. It don't matter. Alright, so day 7, this one was pretty fun. This one is based off the first promotional piece of art that Fujiboto made when Chainsaw Man started. I still don't got Pochita right here, but I think it looks better than before. And I'm also proud of how I did the reflection of Denji on the chainsaw, similar to how Makima's reflection was on the chainsaw Denji was holding in the promotional art. Plus, it also gave me a chance to draw Makima in a different pose, because at this point I was thinking to myself, man, I keep drawing her just standing still facing the camera, I'm not a fan of that. With these sort of art challenges, you gotta push yourself outside your comfort zone and find things that are creative to draw and also like just fun to look at, you know? I could easily have just made a template of Makima and put her in different outfits they call in a month, but then I realized that's not fun and that's not really a good way of doing things. Anyways, here's Makima standing still again. This one is based off of Juliet from Lollipop Chainsaw, which I never played, um, not yet at least. I know they're maybe working on like a remaster or something, but I figured, hey, it'd be cute. Also, kind of crazy foreshadowing here to uh, something that happens in part two of Chainsaw Man. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. I also made a pigtail variant because Juliet from Lollipop Chainsaw has twin tails, so I figured, yeah, why not? I gotta stress though. Chainsaws are mad hard to draw, bro. They got so many goddamn like moving parts and mechanisms and all that. It's very hard to get all the details right. So my mentality was let me make it fit into my art style while also making it as accurate as I feasibly can. Because like in my mind, the focus of the piece is Makima. The chainsaw obviously too, but like make sure she looks good. And then, okay, you can focus on the chainsaw afterwards. So day nine was kind of funny. With the very first Octobeni I did, I did one piece where it's like, oh, what if Kobeni had her hair down? So that was my same mentality here. What if Makima had her hair down? That was until, like, I reread Chainsaw Man and realized, wait, she had her hair down, like, a bunch of times. So I kind of pivoted and <laughs> I turned it into, like, that one Robert Downey Jr. meme of, like, him going, I'm stuff or whatever. And it worked. You know what? It's fine. I like drawing dresses. I think they're fun. Now, March 10 was pretty fun because if you're not aware... March 10th, abbreviated to Mar 10, looks like Mario, and Mario is Italian. And so is Makima, so I decided to draw Makima as Mario, creating Maki Mario. I was trying to fiddle with the lighting on this piece, I think I did okay with the face lighting, but like compared to later pieces I would do, with much more dynamic lighting, this isn't the best. But what matters is that like, I was experimenting, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was trying something different here. The overalls were fun to draw too, though. With day 11, uh, my wife told me to draw Makima with a cake, and I remembered, oh wait, there's a really funny chapter where Power gives Denji a cake, so I'm like, oh, let me just do it with Makima instead. This one was nice, I was able to draw Makima being, like, genuinely happy for once, instead of that, like, facetious persona she puts on. Plus, it gives me an excuse to draw her in, like, that one outfit she was wearing during that chapter, which I thought was a look. She only wore that for a little bit, but I thought it was pretty cute. The cake that Makima is holding is the exact cake that Power got for Denji, so I'm just assuming Makima stole this. With day 12, it's, <laughs> it's just freaking Makima a uh, Neko arc. That's really all there is to it. Every now and then, uh, because back then, right, with uh, Maki March and like the first Octo Benny, I would literally draw these things the day of, and this was while I was juggling going to the gym and going to graduate school, and also like my art commissions. So there were some days where I came home so damn tired, I'm just like, bro, I need to like do something. So I think this Neko arc was one of those days where I'm just like, I need something today. Looking back on it, I don't think doing Maki March in the middle of grad school midterms was a smart idea, but I passed all my classes in all my midterms, so maybe it was a smart idea. So, day 13 is when, like, there's a shift. This is, like, around the time when I'm just like, bro, I'm kind of tired of just drawing Makima standing around and, like, doing nothing or looking scary. So, I decided from, like, here on out, I want to draw her, like, having fun, you know, like, living her life. Does she deserve to? I mean, like, that's debatable. That's depending on whether or not you like Makima, or Chainsaw Man, or Fujimoto. But I thought, you know what, let's let, let's let, let the girl have a little fun. 
So here I drew her in like festival attire. She's eating takoyaki. She got a little uh, pochita mask, which in retrospect isn't really going to cover much. Maybe like one of her eyeballs, but that's about it. But it was fun. I had fun drawing this one. I tried making like the patterns of her kimono be swirly just like her eyes. I thought that'd be cute. And I carried that mantra over to like the next piece for day 14 where I drew Makima wearing a sundress. Because I'm like, you know what? I like sundresses. I like the frills. I like all that stuff. I don't like how I did the folds on this piece looking back on it. But I do appreciate me trying something different. You know what I'm saying? I think the folds here don't really make too much sense, especially when you compare it to like, say, um, the Snowbara I drew back in 2023. I think the folds there make a lot more sense. But I still like appreciate me going out my way back then to do something like this. I think, you know, looking back on this, yeah, I'm proud of it. So with day 15, um, this is Makima wearing Haruko's outfit from Fuli Kuli. The reason being is that Fujimoto has listed a few people that inspired Makima when he wrote Chainsaw Man. And you'll see that I drew those inspirations later on throughout this month. Fuli Kuli, I watched like off of YouTube, I think a decade or two ago when I was younger and it, it definitely left an impact on me. I know with some people that like certain anime like Fuli Kuli kind of rewired their lives when they watched them at a young age, but in my case it just introduced me to the pillows, which I think might have rewired me at a young age. I love the pillows man, they're really good. Day 16 was based off that one meme of Gustavo from Breaking Bad that was going around at the time, and it still kind of goes around every now and then. Just very simple, Makima adjusting her tie, and it also included a variant that kind of cashed in on the meme at the time, which is kind of Chainsaw Man spoilers if you think about it too much, but try not to think about it. For day 17, I drew this one on St. Patrick's Day, so I figured, hey, let me draw Makima enjoying a pint, why not? Originally, I was going to have her like downing a huge glass of beer, but then my wife was like, hey, why don't you draw her as a barmaid? I'm just like, you know what? You're right. Dude, I don't know about like any other artists who are like watching this right now, but like frills are like mad fun to draw. They're kind of annoying and a pain in the ass, but like when you get it like into a rhythm, you start to really enjoy it. And I think the folds here on like her apron look better than like how the folds looked on her sundress. So I'm like getting better, you know? Alright, so with day 18, I'm pretty sure this was the week I came back from watching the Batman with my family, and speaking of, you know, Fooly Cooly and how that rewired some people's brains, this movie rewired my brain, and I love the Batman. It's contentious for some, some people rocked with it, some people didn't like it, I adore this movie. So, for this Makima, I tried replicating that very iconic poster of the Batman of his black silhouette in the red rain and I really, really love how I handled this. For her name, I used like this friggin Batman logo generator I found off of Google and it worked. It ended up coming out really nice, I think. Alright, so for this day, I'm not really happy with how Makima's face looks in retrospect, but I am kind of, you know, I'm like, okay, the pose looks fine. It's day 19, and I drew Makima dressed as Kishot from Kizumonogatari, or, you know, the Monogatari series as a whole. Fujimoto has gone on record saying that the finale of Chainsaw Man Part 1, the duel between Makima and Denji, was heavily based on Araragi versus Kishot at the end of Kizumono 3. Kizumono is one of my favorite film trilogies of all time, Monogatari, um, second season specifically, is one of my favorite anime of all time, so I figured let me do a tribute to both. Looking back on this piece, I'm a fan of the pose, I'm a fan of the shading, I just do wish the face looked a little different, I really don't like how I drew the nostrils here, but that's really about it. Saying in that vein, uh, Day 20 had her dressed as Ben 10 from the Eccentric Family, also known as Ben 10 on Cartoon Network. I watched like one episode of this anime many years ago, but I never really got around to watching any more. And I drew Makima dressed as Ben 10 because of the fact that Fujimoto said, hey, uh, Makima is also based on her as well. You may recognize the eccentric family as the source of that one image of the frog eating chicken in a well. I definitely need to go back and finish watching this because the original novel that the anime is based on was written by the Tatami Galaxy author and the Penguin Highway author. Both of which having some of my favorite anime of all time, so I figured, alright, this one has to be good. With Day 21, uh, this was the same week I watched Jujutsu Kaisen Zero in theaters, so I drew Makima dressed as Maki. So it's Maki, Maki, Ma. 
Uh, it was great. I love Zero. It added on the source material. I hated watching it, though. I'm gonna be real. It was mainly due to the fact that in the theater, there was a bunch of teenagers who just kept talking the entire movie. And, like, here's my thing, man. You're paying money to go to the movies, get popcorn, get your candy, get all that. Why are you talking through the entire movie, bro? If you want to have a conversation with your homies, go, like, outside, go hang out, go to their house. Don't talk in the middle of a movie theater, bro. I will, like, eat you, bro. I remember during the ending of Zero, when, like, Yuta kisses, like, Rika, I heard a bunch of those teenagers go, "Ew!" I'm just like, bro, I wish Ghetto was real right in this very moment. Well, keeping in with the puns, Day 22 had Makima dressed as Tatsumaki from One Punch Man, thus giving us Tatsumakima. I'm not gonna lie though, I did fall off a One Punch Man around like what the Phoenix Man stuff going on when like Kid Emperor fighting the Phoenix guy. It was due to like Murata constantly redrawing and redoing chapters and it got like way too confusing for me and then one day I just stopped. I just stopped reading it and I never went back. It's a shame because I did enjoy what I was reading up to that point. I just think Murata's perfectionism is like his biggest downfall. He's still a great artist though, like I Shield 21 is one of the best manga out there. It's just a shame, you know? With day 23, I thought it'd be cute to draw Makima like one of those soy- <laughs> like one of those soy jacks are like pointing at the screen. I went to Sri Lanka in 2018 and I took a photo of this monkey in like a temple and I thought oh, it would be cute to have Makima in Sri Lanka and like pointing at like a monkey for some reason. I also gave a transparent version in case people want to have her pointing at something in awe. With day 24, like, I don't know, I've always been a fan of like those stupid jokes of like a uh, blank in India. Like freaking I don't know, Omori 2 in India, or like Shin Megami Tensei in India, like those sort of jokes always make me laugh, I don't know why. It's probably because I'm Sri Lankan, so whatever. <laughs> so for this piece, I'm just like, hey, uh, here's Makima in India, you know, she's on vacation, she's a little tourist, here's her in front of like a tuk-tuk or like an auto, as like my family calls them. For day 25, I drew Makima in London? I don't even know why I did. Um, I'm looking at what I wrote, and it's supposed to be Ma-Tima, like tea, like <laughs> what you drink, but I'm like, wh why did I make her go here? I, I could have put her in China. Also, why did I decide to give her abs today when I didn't give her abs yesterday? Eh, it doesn't really matter. I like how I drew her face here. With day 26, this was another one of those days where it's like I came home super late from school. So I just drew friggin' uh, Katamari Makima or Katamakima? Katamari? Yeah. It came from the idea of drawing like the Makima plush that's been going around for a few years. But I'm like, let me put like a little spin on it. So I decided to make her an orb. And I had a little Prince of All Cosmos Denji rolling her up. This one probably took like 15 or 20 minutes to complete, but I think it's really cute and I still like how this one came out. Day 27 had Makima yicking out. Now, if you haven't seen Running Shine's video on yik, you need to go watch that. Running Shine is one of my biggest inspirations and one of my favorite YouTube channels and has been like the primary inspiration for like how I do jokes and all that stuff in videos like my Shenmue video. And I love Running Shine, and I love him for exposing me to stuff like Yik, so I don't have to play it for myself. For those who aren't familiar with Yik, all you need to know is that Makima is doing the same exact pose that Alex Yik likes to do. Now, with Day 28, this one's a little topical because this was around the time that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars, so I decided let me draw that with Makima and Power. I thought that was pretty funny. I like how I drew Power's face here, just like bleh. You know, in retrospect, it's kind of funny how, like, they gave him an Oscar, and then they also banned him for like the next, what, like decade or something? With day 29, I decided, hey, you know what, a few more days left, let's have a little fun. Uh, this one is based off of Saturn devouring his son. So I had Makima just eat Pochita, and you can see I do like a lineless thing here, which I think is really awesome. I need to go back to doing this, I'm very proud of how this one came out. Uh, did you guys know that like, the original name of the painting was like, never assigned by the artist? Like, after the artist died, they were like looking around his house, and they found this painting in the dining room. And they were just like, oh, okay, that's uh, that's Saturn eating his son, right? Honestly, it could be like anyone eating their son, but they decided to give it to Saturn. With day 30, I tried like fiddling with like painting and lighting and rendering. I wanted to give this one like more spooky atmosphere, which I think worked. Except she got massive honkers, why did I do that? <laughs> In retrospect, it's really funny, but I am very proud of how the hands look. To this day, I think these hands are really nice, specifically the fingers, too. And I love the expression I gave her. It's based off that one scene early in Chainsaw Man where she's, like, slaughtering a bunch of goons. And finally, for Day 31, after, like, the dark nature of the last two, 
I just drew Kobeni and Makima on a date because I thought it'd be really cute. Because at this point, I've done like my first Octobeni in 2021. So I'm like, oh, you know what? Let's have this one be like a celebration of both Octobeni and Maki March. I drew Kobeni in her little dress and I drew Makima in the little outfit she wore when she was hanging out with Denji that one time. But wait, I actually have a few more Makima drawings to show you guys. In 2023, I realized that I can't be doing three monthly challenges a year because I am going to die if I do that. So I had like a few new Makima I drew during March of 2023 that I want to show you guys. On March 6th, 2023, I drew this Makima of her just looming over you by your bedside. This one is a direct reference to Twin Peaks, one of my favorite series of all time, and it's based on that iconic frame of Bob looming over the bed. This one was a fun excuse to mess around with shading, with lighting, make her look spooky. I'm a fan of how this one came out, even though it's more than like a year old, I still think it looks great. Day 7 was also pretty fun too, look at that, I drew Makima's Gigas from Earthbound. This one, I remember I had to like fiddle with the layers and try to make it look a little blurry, have like some like chromatic abbreviation or whatever the hell you call that. Um, I had some of that going on and I had fun, I had a lot of fun with this Makima. If you look closely, you can see the swirls in her eyes. With day 14, I based this one off of Doraemon by Hoshino again. Um, no one really got it in the replies, but this one took like 5 minutes to draw. It was just fun, I wanted to draw like, a little stupid looking Makima. But, what I think is one of my best drawings to this date, is the one I drew on March 31st, 2023, of Denji, Nayuda, Aki, and Power over the cover of Good Kid Mad City by Kendrick Lamar. This is one of my favorite pieces that I think I've ever done. I think it is fantastic. I am sorry for tooting my own horn throughout this video, but I'm very proud. I am very proud. A lot of times, artists are like the harshest critic and their meanest critic, so I'm like, let me be nice to myself for once. I'm proud of myself for the image's composition, for how the poses look, for how I found the font that Kendrick wrote Good Kid Mad City in. I'm very happy with this piece, and looking back on it, I think it's a very good send-off for Maki March. And with that, that covers pretty much all of the drawings I've done for Maki March in 2022, in addition to some of the pieces I did in 2023. I couldn't draw anything in 2024, unfortunately, for Maki March, because I was way too busy, sadly. And sick, I was also pretty sick too. I hope you guys enjoyed this romp through memory lane. It was really fun just like looking back on all these pieces I did and just seeing how far I've come as an artist. I'm gonna be doing Octobeni again this year, so expect another Kobeni video before the end of the year. And with that out of the way, I'm gonna read off my patrons, and I'll see you guys next time where I talk about the underdogs of Weekly Shonen Jump. So, shouting out my patrons, we got The Bard, oh hey, it me. Such as Banana, Trayman Jenkins, Expert Student 64, Smog, Dominos, Folk Punk, Megi Dodine, Soon Mene, Seragnal, Big Boo Goddamn, Polaroid Jack, Sour Lolita, Borpolis Vunny, Real Sethery, Luce Vento, C, Kiwi Kiwi, V, Andrew, Braystar, Amatura Misu, Logan, Sianaru, and Jeeb. Thank you guys as always, I love you all, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.